Hello and welcome back to Breaking Bad Influence, the show in which I point at Andy's shirt and say, oh, that's a colourful shirt, Andy. Here we are, halfway through season two, and today we'll be looking at the Hanna-Barbera movie studio, as well as Aladdin on the Mega Drive. And I'm not sure what Violet is wearing, but I think it might be awakening something from my teenage years. First, though, Violet's going to show us the new Thunder Seat. What'd you get for Christmas for someone who's got everything? Well, if you've got a spare £300, you could get them one of these. It's called a Thunder Seat, and you can plug it into any console or computer, and it makes you feel like you're driving a tank or flying a plane. I'm using it with a brand new fight or flight simulator called TFX. So what does it feel like? If you drop the landing gear, for instance, you can sort of feel a low rumble underneath you. Or, um, launch a missile. Oh, there it goes. You can sort of feel it exploding away from you. So basically it's a seat that tickles your ass while you're playing a flight simulator. But how does it work? It uses the low frequency or bass sounds from the music you hear when you play the game and feeds them through to this huge speaker in the base of the seat. Oh, it's literally just a seat with a bass speaker stuck where your arsehole is. Gives a whole new meaning to the term brown noise. I've got a thunder seat at home. Is it the toilet, Andy? But enough of me and my eating habits. Yes, it's the toilet. Our main review this week is Aladdin on the Mega Drive. Straight into our first review then, Aladdin on the Mega Drive. A decent Disney platformer. Hopefully they've got someone enthusiastic to talk about it. This is the best looking game I've ever seen on the Mega Drive. Never mind. Here I am in level 4, which is the Sultan's dungeon. Before he gets to the end of the level, Aladdin has to escape by avoiding these balls on chains. I'm getting a bit bored of the game by this time, as all the levels are much the same. This game's got gorgeous graphics and really good music. It's just a shame there's nothing special about the gameplay. I give this game full marks for the graphics, but it definitely loses points for the gameplay. Beautiful, but dull. Just like... yeah ma'am. Don't be fooled by the graphics. This game looks fantastic, but the gameplay lets it down. Well, everyone hated Aladdin on the Mega Drive, surprise, surprise. It's a fine enough game, so of course the Bad Influence kids would shit all over it. What are the scores on the doors, then? And so the final scores for Aladdin. The girls gave it a lamptastic 4 out of 5, mate. And the boys gave it an ingenious 4 out of 5. Well, I just don't know what to say anymore. Hello, Furtless. After the astonishing success of my time travel experiment last week, I've decided to allow you, my fans, to join in this week's experiment. It's a mind over matter experiment. Together, we are going to attempt to levitate this object. Okay, quiz time. Nam is banging on about levitation. So what Game Gear game is he about to give a cheat for? I'll give you a clue, it's Shinobi 2. There is never any connection between his skits and the game he's giving a cheat for. I've got no idea why they bother. He's off, isn't he? Next, we're taking a look at the Hanna-Barbera movie studio, and Andy's going to take us through the process of making a cartoon. But previous animation packages have been designed for use by professionals. This one, though, the Hanna-Barbera movie studio, is designed for use by idiots, which is why I'm demonstrating it. I thought we'd start with something along a fishy theme. So I'll get me a little fish, and I'll reproduce him, and I'll put the fish down here. Now, the grey images that you're seeing is a technique called onion skinning, and what that does, it allows you to position your fish in relation to the previous ones. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Andy Crane's fantastic fishy animation. The great thing about this package is that it comes with pre-programmed stuff of your favourite Hanna-Barbera characters. Now, here's a sneak preview of the Jetsons having a space bomb. That's enough of that shite, but also it's not, because now we've got an example of stop frame animation, where Andy moves a paper Flintstone character around and takes pictures of it in order to create another animation. It's really boring. <laughs> News and previews time. Zool 2, no one's favourite game, is coming out on the Amiga. Dixons are selling the Lynx for $34.99, which is insane presumably because it's going out of production. Now we think it's easily the best of the handheld systems. It's got great color graphics and brilliant sound. And if anyone tries to tell you that the Lynx has been discontinued, tell them they're talking tosh. Atari have just released two new games for the system and they promise us this will not go out of production. Yeah, we'll see about that, Andy. Dennis the Menace game is coming out, the American one, not the good one, and it's a shit game on the SNES, so that's cool. Lastly, there's a portable route planning computer now available, which I'm sure children up and down the country will be absolutely clamouring for. 
And now for some more games reviews. Darkwing Duck review is up next, a good little Mega Man style game, much like every other Disney game Capcom produced on the NES. It's a great little platform game with some really nice touches. But enough of what I think, what do this gaggle of idiots make of it? This is a great little platform game with some really nice touches. I know, I just said that. This level's quite challenging because there's characters coming out all the time ready to kill you. This bit's hard because you have to get your timing completely right, otherwise you fall on the spikes and die. There's helicopters and coming out everywhere at you. You've just got to try and avoid them because they may damage you. The character's trying to kill me again, but I killed him first. I've just fallen on the helicopter, but I'm just a bit startled. No, you're not just a bit startled. You slipped on a banana peel for the hundredth time after hitting pretty much every single enemy on the way there. Good God. It just goes to show you don't need fancy graphics to make a great game. The gameplay's quite good here, but the graphics are pretty average. Mind you, that's what you'd expect from an 8-bit game. I've no idea why they're banging on about the graphics. It's a bloody NES game. It looks fine. And the scores for Darkwing Duck. The girls gave it an excellent 4 out of 5, but the boys didn't think it was that good and gave it an average 3 out of 5. Girls are right on the scores with this one. Darkwing Duck is a surprisingly good little title, and graphically, it looks the same as literally any other NES game, so just ignore the boys' scores and words on this one because they're being rubbish. Disposable Hero and the Amiga is next. Never heard of it. Curtains is back to give his opinion, though, and his hair looks even heavier than last time, if that's possible. If you're a fan of fast shooting ups, you'll probably enjoy this game. But be warned, it's very hard. This is one of the bosses on level two. Surprisingly, he is not the final guardian. It will take a while to destroy. This game is very hard. Yeah, you've already said that, mate. You'll realise that the levels are very similar and repetitive. I'm not sure if he's describing the game or his own review style here. What I've just collected is money which I can use in shops to buy extra weapons and power-ups. This is yet another boss, but not the final one. I'm just about to collect some money, which I can spend in the shop. You, you've literally just said that exact same thing. Is there an echo in here or what? This game is very hard. This isn't the best shooter upon the Amiga. It's a good blast, but there's nothing really new about it. It's too hard for very experienced players only. This game is very hard. Both the girls and the boys thought it was average. They both gave it a throwaway three out of five. Three out of five each? Probably about right. Who knows? The only thing I learned from that review is that it was very hard and you can pick up money to buy things in a shop. Absolutely useless. Um... Namrud's back with another skit about meditation, but more's the point. What's going on with the colour of the buttons on his SNES pad? Advertising is all about selling things and making them look their best. What do kids who are interested in video games like more than anything else? Car adverts. And modelling. And modelling in car adverts. So here we have an incredibly long section about modelling in car adverts. The intention is to get the lighting and pose as close to the final version as possible. And you don't necessarily need a car there. Make believe time. This is the back of a car? Find out exactly how super a model they can make of me. And so today's task is to make this sketch a reality by putting me in the picture. So which one are we going to use? Well, it's up to you really. Uh, as the model, you can have final choice. I like that one, but I prefer my eyes in that one. On the screen, each picture is made up of tiny dots called pixels. The more pixels, the better the picture. For quality work like this... The editor-in-chief here just blatantly zooming into Violet's chest. Once again, this is a kid's show. Calm yourselves down. On this picture of the model, um, the photographer has provided the model with the foam pads just to save her knees. Um, but we can retouch those out. What I'm going to do is just draw a mask around the line of the leg. Now here we can see a bit of foam pad where her knee has pressed into the foam. So I'm going to have to draw her knee at that point. And I can copy bits of the picture from one place to the other. That's just what I'm doing here. I'm drawing with her actual skin. But it was fun while it lasted. Well, I thought you looked smashy before they furted with you. Thank it. you. Last week someone won a Jaguar, this week it's a Mega Drive with Aladdin, which is very vanilla at this point. Bring back the Neo Geos. Um, um. Finally, we're back to Namrud, who's continuing his blatant cultural appropriation. Disgusting. You wouldn't catch any of the others doing that. Ever omnipotent, um. the Omrude. Um. 
Okay, fine, whatever. At least Andy hasn't been too embarrassing this episode for once. He's going back to my place with all the lentils. Okay, fine, whatever. It's date of last time. So, in summary then, bad influence review scores definitely do not reflect the words that come out of the reviewers' mouths. Dixon's once sold off the Lynx handheld for a measly £35, and Disposable Hero on the Amiga is very hard and you can pick up money to use in the shops. See you next time for another episode of Breaking Bad Influence. <laughs> <laughs>